My name is Jay. Four years ago on my YouTube channel, my, one of my best friends and I decided to create a TV, to create a show where the two of us got together once a week and talked about our favorite TV shows. Then my YouTube channel was unceremoniously shut down. So we had to become something else. We are something else. We are Bum. channel chasers. Bum, 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 bum. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was, uh, I've been like rehearsing that <laughs> for about 30 minutes. Uh, welcome back to Channel Chasers, you guys. As always, I am your host, Jay, and joining me, as always, ever vigilantly, is my friend, my co-host, and my self-proclaimed sidekick, Brian. How you doing tonight, Brian? You're speedy slash arsenal. Hey, guys. So, I'm here. We are here to talk about the true end of an era, you guys. This is it. This is the last time we are going to be able to talk about Arrow as a whole because it's over. I saying that out loud is still weird. It's yeah. over. Oh man, like Arrow means a lot to both of us. And I mean, I spent a lot of time during the plug section last week just, you know, going on about it. Mm -hmm. So I won't spend too much time talking about it now. Uh, but Brian, are you excited for t this week's topic? Because it's pretty huge. Yeah, I mean, it is. Uh, because I mentioned this in our plugs last week too, but. When you say end of an era, it's not just the fact that this started the Arrowverse, which is sprawling on to, um, I think in total, um, like seven shows by the end of the year. Do we count Star? No, we don't count Star Girl. That's just part of the multiverse, right? Yeah. Okay. But because the Arrowverse is now Earth Prime. Okay, so yeah, because I was confused about that, because, you know, Stargirl is being uh, aired on the CW also, so that sort of confuses me a little bit. Well, they made it clear at the end of Crisis that Stargirl was on its own separate Earth. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just making sure, because, like, the, I, I know a lot of people came to me with questions about that on Twitter and stuff, so. Yeah, but um, still, though, we're getting Green Arrow and the Canaries, hopefully. We're yeah. getting Superman and Lois. Which, yeah, and, like, you know, the, the casting was announced for that recently for the boys, which is real cool. Uh, but, you know, we're not here to talk about that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying my best not to, to go full tangent mode because I realized um, our recording software has a habit. So. And yeah. also um, just take this moment to maybe apologize to the YouTube crowd because. We never really did post our Sabrina on YouTube, and oh, oh yeah, that 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 was just due to technical issues. We'll hopefully get that straight for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if if you happen to be listening and wondering, are wondering where the Sabrina episode was that we promised you guys, uh, you know, at the end of the episode two weeks ago. Um, but yeah. Um, before we officially get started, started though, I want to, you know, first off, just say thank you to just the entire audience of Channel Chasers in general, to everybody who's, you know, stuck with us since day one on the YouTube, on my YouTube channel, and then, you know, later the uh, podcast Omniverse channel, to just the new people that have come to find us on Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all these wonderful places. Uh, thank you guys once again. You're awesome. We love you. Yes, indeed. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, Brian, uh, this show just means a lot to both of us, man. We kind of owe our careers. I mean, you know, not technically your career, not technically your career, career, your actual job, but we owe our careers as reviewers to Arrow. We really do. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I mean, um, I, I only really technically joined like started reviewing Arrow in its last season but if you want to get really technical 
Arrow is what got you into reviews, and you were what got me into reviews. Well, I, there's, there is that. Yes, there is that bit of six degrees. But I was also going to say, without Arrow, there would have not been a Legend of Tomorrow, which was, you know, you, yep. your first big show that, you know, is, you know, one of your mainstays on your channel now. And Supergirl is also, like, you know, one of the big ones that, you know, spun off of the Arrowverse. And... Yeah, and I covered both of those from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I mean, my quote-unquote Arrow will always be Doctor Who, but that's what seriously got me into reviewing, was reviewing those, and those are spinoffs. Yeah. But, but also, what I... What I was saying earlier, I'll try to keep it short because I know you said that you don't want tangents. But Arrow, when we say is end of an era, it's not just the Arrowverse. It's also like it reinvented the popularity of superheroes, especially superheroes on TV. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe not as, I mean, it, it came out during the beginning of the superhero boom, which, you know, was perfect. But it did, yeah, really reinvent, uh, reinvent and re-energize superheroes on TV. And they took it, from, you know, people started taking it seriously, you know. I mean, Smallville was, you know, a, you know, drama on the CW that lasted a decade. And I always will love it, um, which, you know, is the grandfather to Arrow. Uh, but prior to Smallville and Arrow, but especially with Arrow, um, like the only time people have seen superheroes on TV live action wise are like, you know, the Linda Carter Wonder Woman, the Adam West Batman, the John West with Ship Flash, which no knocks against any of those because those are still awesome, uh, you know, when viewed in the, like, in the context of their time. But if you, like, look at them compared to this, it's just, like, a whole different world was opened thanks to Arrow. Indeed. Um, yeah. And we can talk more about this later or not at all, but... It kind of also reinvigorated the concept of spinoffs. Oh, because, oh, yeah. Because, like, before it was just, like, a show was really popular, and so they'd try a spinoff, and sometimes it would be a success, like Frasier, but then most of the you times could, it would just you be got a garbage fire, say, like Joe. I was just about to say, sometimes you got a Frasier, sometimes you got a, um, you know, the Jeffersons, but other times you got Joey. Yo, uh, which no offense to Matt LeBlanc, but that sucked. Dude, love Joey. Joey's one of my favorite characters. Joey is the character that everybody says, you know, I am the most like. Um, which, which you know, is funny though, because you know who people say that I'm most like? Who, Chandler or Ross? Yeah, uh, I was gonna say, don't let them insult you and call you a Ross. Just punch them in the face if they call you. No, a Ross. they say I'm. You're definitely a Chandler. Chandler. Yeah, you're definitely a Chandler. Could I? be any more like Chandler. <laughs> but anyways, uh, ten, but I, before, but, um, you know, this isn't going to be a, like, just focused discussion on the finale. I kind of just wanted to use this episode as, like, an overall retrospective on Arrow and our thoughts on Arrow just over the years. Obviously, we can't go into every little detail, uh, but, you know, the finale will be our, like, you know, kind of focal point but like i just kind of want to talk about the season overall since this is kind of again the whole overall end and also just heads up um both of us did go into separate video reviews for the finale yep uh mine is on blair uh which you know is always linked in the description and brian's youtube channel is also always linked in the description as well um so yeah um you know like last thing, I like going back into origins. Like, like Brian met, alluded to before. Like, uh, if it wasn't for Arrow, I wouldn't be reviewing TV. You know, I spent uh, uh, the early part, the first two years of my YouTube career, or actually no, the first like six months really, because Arrow came out in 2012. I started my channel in 2012. Um, but like, I started the early part of my YouTube career uh, reviewing comic books. Now, don't get me wrong, I love comic books. They're all over my room. They are, you know, part of what made me who I am today. Uh, but I'm going to be real with y'all. Comic books are expensive. Um, mm -hmm. and, and keeping up with a pull list on a weekly basis when you were in college at the time and broke, uh, yeah, it doesn't work out. Well, How especially considering each 
comic is like what? It's like four to five dollars. Four dollars. Yeah, four to five, depending on like the uh, type of issue it is. Yeah. It's uh, and if you're if you're doing like five to ten a, a week, that's that's like twenty five to. Oh, uh, dude. Fifty dollars. Trust me, I used to sp- I used to spend forty. I used to spend between forty to sixty bucks a week, and it hurts my it hurts my wallet just saying that. Like, how could I do that to myself? Um, but you know, uh, then I realized, like, oh shit, uh, I love the Green Arrow. Uh, TV is free. Uh, you know, in a sense, because you know, cable. Um, but and streaming services. Yeah, but you know, uh, like. Oh, I, I, you know, I really like the Green Arrow. He's one of my favorite DC characters. This new show is coming out. Let me watch it. It was rough, but you know what? I was like, you know, I, I need to talk about this. More people need to hear this. And so I got in front of my camera, put the hat on. Actually, no, I, I put a hood up. This, this was. This, this, I, I can tell you, this is how early it is in my YouTube career. This is before I was where I had. I regularly wore hats. This was was incredible to those of you out there who might remember this or not. This was back when he was going by Mr. J's comic reviews. Yeah. <laughs> and it confused people that I was reviewing a TV show, which is why eventually I changed the name. But yeah, so that's just how like how far back Arrow like goes with me. And I've I've been with it through ups and downs. There was even a point where I like almost quit. <laughs> And, and then I was just like, you know what, guys? I love you, but I'm done. You, you, you broke me. You broke me. You did this back to back with some other crap. No, I'm. I'm. This is it. I'm not. Re- I'm not reviewing it anymore. I'm gonna still watch it, but I'm not gonna review it anymore. And then I got good, like a season later, and I was like, okay, I'm back. Yeah, it's like. We're going to kill off this beloved character. Oh, crap. People hate us killing off this beloved character. So, uh, we're not going to bring her back. Because that would cheapen cheapen her death and the, like, amazing heartfelt moment that she had with Oliver, which was actually really well done, you know, well earned, despite, like, the, like, stuff around it. But we are going to take advantage of this thing that Flash did for us. So. Yeah. Thanks, Barry. We appreciate it. Um, well, you know what, though? Zoom is actually the one to blame. So thank you, Zoom. Oh, yeah. You know what? Yeah, for real. Um, but, yeah, so Arrow, man. I don't, I don't even know where to start. Let, let's talk about the finale, though. Let's talk about the finale. Though. Um, wow. I, you know, I I always joke that I cry a lot during um tv shows um but man this felt like the most genuine like choked up i can't believe this is happening like type of moments that i had like in a long time yeah i i was texting jay and some friends when this happened and i definitely openly admit that I got choked up, and I would have cried if not for oh, them hitting uh, us with a giant geeky shock yeah, that just yeah. shocked me like, out of it. Literally, I was about, I was about like, I was already like, tear, I was tearing up, and then they hit us with that, and then it's just like, <gasps> I start yelling and screaming, <laughs> and like my like my parents knock on my wall, and I'm just like, Dad, he's a Green Lantern. Because, spoilers, by the way, in case you guys didn't know. Yeah, my bad, y'all. Usually I do give a spoiler warning when before we get into the, the, the shit. My bad. Uh, I, I apologize. Spoiler alert. Um, yeah, so, like, when that moment happened, I just freaked the fuck out. I, I mean, I mean, everybody freaked the fuck out. Um, Everyone did. And and they didn't even show us anything. They didn't show us the green light. It was just a glow. That's all we needed yeah. was a glow. Now, like, to be fair, and, you know, it, it saddens me, but to be fair, uh, we have gotten later confirmation that that was pretty much 
the ex- the absolute extent they were allowed to do, and it does not look like John will be playing John in the Green Lantern HBO Max series. As far as we know, they could be keeping, yes. They could be keeping something under wraps just to just to really be like sell this show and be like, well, hey, Arrow people, check this out. They have Mark. Guggenheim, who's like the godfather of Arrow, Mm -hmm. and like everyone behind there has admitted that several times, though, for like these big events, they'll tease something that they don't know if they have the rights to or not. Yeah. And then they'll work a whole year on trying to get it to us. Yeah. Hence hence why uh, early on in Arrow, I believe it was either season two or season three, the first Suicide Squad episode, we actually hear Tara Strong voicing Harley Quinn, but we don't actually see Harley Quinn. That that was one where they tried their hardest and it didn't work out. But then other times, like with Superman on, on Supergirl, they showed us a hint of Shadow Superman, and then they worked on it for like yeah, a year. They showed us like the shadows, they showed us his boots, they showed us his cape. But they weren't able to like actually show him until finally they did. So like don't discourage yourselves, guys, just because they said right now that that was the absolute limit of what they could do. That doesn't mean that they aren't working right now to make it happen so so that, you know, HBO Max can have a reason to like get the CW people to you know dump their money into the service uh, because like let me tell you if I know a good amount of people that if they found out that John Diggle was actually a John Stewart which canonically he actually is because his stepfather is General Stewart um so, mm-hmm. so if we, you know, if we find that out, like I know a ton of people who, like, even people who hate Arrow but love Diggle will be like, "Oh, Diggle's finally getting his own thing." Bet. Let's do it. Especially, yeah, the- especially because it's away from the CW and there's a lot of like just general CW hate. And yeah, uh, but also that is another universe, so I don't know if they'd bring in. David Ramsey. Uh, like I said, you never know. I'm not. I'm like. I'm not like. I right know, now. but when I say that they're working on it, I think what's probably going to happen is, uh, like basically, Superman pre, Superman and Lois. Oh, so like it, like in Green Arrow and the Canaries, uh, it's going to be like, oh yeah, where? Yeah, he, he's not here. Well, just show up for like an episode or two for like a big thing. Maybe be in the crossover, but like only come in when they can save the budget for it. That's a lot of, yeah, that's a lot of saving they need. Uh, uh, well, to be but, fair, to be fair though, they did save the budget enough to have a kaiju anti monitor and a kaiju bebo. True. That is fair. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so let's let's we already addressed like Oliver's death and stuff in the crisis episode. So if you want to hear our thoughts on that, check those episodes out. Um, yeah. But yeah, let's talk about this this funeral. And I kind of want to connect it to the Flash episode from um, you know this previous week as well because uh, you know Barry's story heavily connects to Oliver, and you know it helped. It's basically Oliver's two brothers kind of grieving his loss. So we should you know technically rope that in also. Um, so. This this episode was fucking beautiful, um, and the, like I, I'm talking about like the finale, and you know Brian and I had this running joke uh, throughout the episode. Uh, the catchphrase of the episode was "Thanks, Crisis," yep. <laughs> because we kept seeing people, and we weren't no. being sarcastic. Yeah, no actual thanks, Crisis, because we kept seeing people that you know you know, were killed, and we were sad that they were killed, and they're brought back. Dude, because, oh. they start off with Moira. Yeah! And they they even, like, do a rope-a-dope with us, because 
in the pre. Yeah, you you th- you think that you think that you're just you know replaying the scene of Oliver's mom dying because they replayed it in the in the special beforehand. Which, by the way, I know the Arrow people had nothing to do with this. It was just the promotional people. I hated the way that they promote that. Yeah. Because they were like, Arrow, two-hour event, two-hour event. And it's like, no. It's not a two-hour event. It's a, it's a one-hour behind-the-scenes like special and then the regular episodes. Honestly, um, you know, I, I complained about that at first, but on but that uh but that pre special did get me like in my feels and in the mood for it. So like I just wish they would have worded it better. Oh yeah, I definitely think it was marketed wrong, but the CW has always had like shitty marketing with their stuff. But but anyway, so yeah, they show that like recap thing and in it they show Moira's death. Mm-hmm. So then you start off the episode and you're like what the fuck? Yeah, we're seeing this again? Why? Like, literally, me and Brian were both like, why this scene again? And it's just like, but, oh, shit! But then Oliver breaks his bindings and, like, lays him down, which, by the way, um, good on you for the, tr- for the, the tricky... Like, way that you filmed that, so you didn't have to show Manu, because you couldn't get Manu, yep. but why couldn't you get Manu? Right? But, but, clever editing. Like, props to your yeah. editors. Yeah. Um, like, as, and, as someone who has, you know, had to self-teach um, editing to themselves, or as two people who have had to self-teach editing to themselves, um, like, we appreciate the grind. Yeah, because that that looked very convincing. And then we we cut and we bring back something that everyone probably forgot about. Unless you've been really paying attention to Arrow. Um, so, like, during last season, they had this vigilante documentary that served as the through line between the past and the present, or the future and the present. Um, because Mio was watching it as, as kind of like a record of, like, you know, what Star City thought of vigilantes at the time and stuff like that. Um, it's the documentary redone, but it's like re, it's being repurposed as an Oliver Queen tribute doc. Yeah, they even got back the documentary chick, and she was like, "Yeah, when I started this, it was like anti-vigilante, but I never thought that I'd completely change it." Yep, I didn't think it would come to this, and I didn't think he was gonna die. It's like no one thought he was gonna die. Nope. Um, no one did. But then you see that and you're like, oh, sh- Moira's back. Yeah, that was wild. And also, if, like, if that wasn't enough, you know, we, uh, we like, see, like, people just hanging around. You see, Lor- you see, you know, Laurel as in Black Siren Laurel. And it's just like, okay, cool. But who walked up to her? Fucking Tommy! Well, apparently, I guess we missed it because of the, because of the hype and all that, but if you go back, when she has a one-on-one with Lance, which by the way, I'm talking about Quentin Lance, who's also brought back. Yeah, they brought back Quentin! <laughs> Yay! She says Tommy. She talks about, like, people who were brought back like Tommy, because she has a serious, like, existential moment where she's like, Oliver brought back all the people that died, except for my Earth One counterpart. So yep, yeah, and that and that, that's a huge thing. I love how so you know a lot of people like complain about backdoor pilot shit all the time, and how like you know, uh, um, you know, main shows try to force you to care about the spinoff. This was so organic. Because Laurel, her entire struggle as Black Siren and later the Black Canary um, has always been about, like, am I worthy of being a good guy? Your Laurel was a good person. She was a hero. She died a hero. I've never been a hero. Do I really deserve to be her? And it's just like, and then eventually, thanks to Oliver and the rest of the team, she realizes, no, I'm not her. I'm my own person, and I'm, you know, just as good. I can fit this role. And, you know, that's kind of the, like, Oliver's last gift to her, making her realize, like, 
the reason I didn't bring my Laurel back was because Laurel, all her business is finished. You know, like, you know, she got to say her goodbye. She had her, you know, sense of closure. She died a hero. She, you know, she died the way she wanted to on her own terms. You know, although, you know, the fan in me wants to argue that, but like, it, speaking in show, understand. Makes sense. But also speaking out of show, no offense to Katie Cassidy, but Earth One Laurel had some stupid so, moments. So, uh, I, I want to shoot Laurel some bail real quick, because, you know, I went back and I um, I watched a couple, not, not episodes, but like clips. They had some real cool shit with early Laurel that they kind of just dropped, because they, like, they ended up foregoing the, um, you know, the Laurel Ollie relationship because um, of the just phenomenal chemistry between Emily and Steven, which I don't blame them for. Because despite no. my like love hate relationship with this ship, at the end of the day, I still love it because I remember how it started what it was and what it eventually became and what it means to this yeah. show. Yeah. And also, um, sometimes when you're running a TV show, you have to go with where the chemistry yeah. is. Like, even a bigger case is uh, going back to what we mentioned before, Friends. Mm -hmm. For those that don't know, originally they had planned on Monica and Joey being the end game couple, but then they noticed that Monica and Chandler had more chemistry, so they went with that. You have to do that, <coughs> Supergirl. <coughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not like you know giving her a boyfriend every season has failed, and so maybe you should either keep her single or give her a girlfriend because she clearly has way more chemistry with every female she interacts. Okay. Wrong, 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 wrong episode. I'll, we'll get there when we get there. Th that's going to be an episode. I could do an entire episode just on this topic. Um, but, yeah. So, like, you know, uh, Ollie's last gift to Laurel Black Siren is making her realize, no, the reason I didn't bring Laurel back is because you are her legacy. Like, Moira, she was killed unceremoniously without really, like, getting to see... Her, the, the fruit of, like, her son's work, um, you know, really showing her ch children that she was proud, redeeming herself. She died before that could happen. Tommy died before he could, you know, be there for his friend, be, like, supportive, and actually, like, help him out through his time. He just found out about Ollie being the hood at the time, like, relatively close to when he died. So, he didn't really get to experience any of that. He didn't get a chance at the life. Laurel had a whole life, a very fulfilling life. She loved, she lost, she fought, she, you know, both in the courtroom and, like, on um, on the battlefield, like, in costume. And to be fair, like, the courtroom stuff with Laurel, like, you know, I know a lot of people complained about it, but some of it was really good. Yeah, when they weren't, like, Bringing in her whole addiction crap, it was still really good. Yeah, Arrow has a rough history with the, trying to, like, display characters being addicted to she, stuff. She had her moments, and, um, even though, even though I did not care for the whole bringing in Wildcat and making him young and sexy, I did like that arc for her. Yeah, like learn, learning yeah. to kick ass and like, you know, be her own person. I thought that was dope. Yeah, and I wish they would have brought him in more. And I but... mean, uh, well, that's because he got a role. Yeah, he got a role on another show uh, that, um, you know, blew up. Uh, but ended unceremoniously itself. Uh, no, well, no, no. Uh, well, after that, he got a role oh. in Good Girls. Oh, I was yeah. talking about Good Girls, but you were talking about Conviction. No, but yeah. No, I was talking about Jessica Jones. Oh, well, there's also that. But yeah, he's on Good Girls. Um, no? 
I thought his show that he went on was Power. No, he was killed on Power. Um, yeah, and then he went to Jessica Jones when he was killed on Power. Oh no, um, but yeah, he, he's on Good Girls now. Is one of the like the guy working for the guy on Conviction. Uh, he's one of the guy, like he's one of the like the lieutenants. But that's, oh. that's another show. I thought he's on Misfit. I thought he was on um... Manifest. Yeah, I, I Manifest. Think he's, I think he's doing double because uh, like it's not he's he's not like a he's not like a main character in that he just shows up every now and again. All right, cool. Anyway, back to Arrow. Um, we don't try to do these sidekicks. No, yeah, we're, we're, we're just tangential in nature. I promise not to do tangents, but tangents are going to happen regardless, so whatever. Um, um, okay. So, but yeah, we were talking about so Laurel, yeah, Laurel and how um, she had her ups and downs, and um, it was it was such a good She art. definitely made a couple moves that I was like, I don't like that you're doing this, but the outcome is pretty cool. Yep. Like bringing her sister back. Yep. I also, I mean, without that, we wouldn't have gotten Legends. So yeah. Um. But yeah, no. Um. This, it was just a beautiful way to wrap, not wrap up her like Black Siren story, but to segue into what she was gonna do on you know Green Arrow and the Canaries. Um. Like, you know. As much as Dinah's going to be there as the representative of, you know, OTA, or, you know, semi-OTA, I guess, because, like, she's not OTA-OTA, um, but, you know, um, uh, you know, Dinah's going to be there to represent the previous generation of heroes and, like, you know, her fa- like her father's people, because, you know, she was trained directly under Oliver, um, but Laurel is going to be more of, like, that mother figure, that big sister, like, aunt type of like person for um mia like get your ass up yeah like she's the tough love type and that's gonna be great that's what it got me really excited for green arrow and the canaries and it didn't feel just like a cheap setup you know what i mean it felt very organic to the episode and to the show um yeah which which by the way uh just because we briefly mentioned it um even though she was definitely not the focal, um, Dinah got a couple moments here and there. Yeah, and, you know, Brian and I have had our, again, ups and downs with Dinah, too. There were whole points in the show where we were just like, I freaking hate you. What are you doing? Your your boyfriend is evil. Stop it. Yeah, most of it. And, you know, that goes to show you the whole Bechdel test thing. Most of her bad spots were were involving a male character. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and it's only once she went beyond that did we start to like her. Because someone actually went through and did it, and multiple times Green Arrow and the Canaries passes the backdoor test. And I feel like the I feel like that was kind of the weak. That's kind of one of the weaknesses of the CW in general. Just kind of like talking in general, because like whenever like they make a relationship a main plot, it ends up hindering both characters involved in said relationship. Case in point, uh, that whole arc and that whole, like, journey, uh, for a time, ruined one of my absolute favorite characters in the entire Arrowverse. Cisco Ramon went from being this cool, fun, nerdy, like, to this whiny little... And, like, you know, Dinah had a, a similar kind of transformation, but in, like, the reverse. You know, she was this whiny, angry bitch, and then she calmed the fuck down and actually became the voice of reason. Which, yay, good for you. But, but also, we were talking, chatting, and it was like a running thing for me. Because she kept talking about her future, like, yeah, it's giving me a job. And it's like, bitch, you thought. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, he it's like yeah, he offered me the promotion it, to, you know, be the, the chief. It's like <laughs> Yeah, sure. And even the last time we see her character, she's on a motorcycle gonna drive to a new city to be their hero. And it's like nope. Oh man. That's great. But yeah, so that was Dinah and Laurel. 
Yeah. So, um, you know, that's something that was good about the uh, about the finale. I'm now I can't pretend that this finale is perfect. Just so the people can get off my back and stop saying that I'm a CW apologist. Um, you know, one uh, something that felt forced, even though I enjoyed it because I'm a fan of these characters. It did kind of come out of nowhere. Was the Thea Roy plot? Yeah, that kind of now came out of nowhere. Now, to be fair, I liked these characters, so I was happy. But I understand that a lot of people were just like, "Okay, why do we care? Like, where the fuck has she been? I don't give a fu- I don't give a fuck that like you know Roy ditched her. Good for him." Uh, like, you know, I was seeing all that kind of discourse, but like, guys. Guys, this could give us Leanne Harper. Like, leave it alone. Let let it happen. I know it was forced. It, it was forced, and I see people who go against it, but I can also see argument for it. Like, this is the first time that he's seen her since. And I mean, honestly, it was kind of a big move to go from we broke up to marry me. Yeah. But... But as a fan of the characters, I like it. And as a fan of the ship, I am all for it. But I will acknowledge that it was kind of rushed. But I do do like the little jokes they went with that. Which was the fact that um, Earth Prime Moira actually likes Roy now. Yeah, I thought that was hilarious. (laughs) But yeah. Oh man. Oh, and also though, with Roy, we did get to finally see his metallic arm. Yeah, that was cool. Really cool. Yeah, it looks nice. It looked it looked almost like a like sleek, like stark version of the Elysium tech. Yeah, right. Um, but, uh, like, I didn't expect the robot arm to actually look like a legit robot arm. I just thought they were going to be like, oh, yeah, no, he got a prosthetic, um, and it just has really good, like, skin attachments. Like, you know, that they're going to wave it off. Or it was going to be, like, Bucky's arm. <laughs> or, or, you know, they, they put a chip in, they put a chip in him to make him, re- <laughs> to make him re his arm. <laughs> you <think I've> done <laughs> that. I'm not gonna let that go. I will never let that go. And this is the last time I'm ever gonna be able to make that joke. <laughs> Which you know, fun fact for you guys. Final season of Arrow. They never mention it. Nope. Ever. And good. Let's forget it. Didn't happen. What fucking I mean they even touched upon it last season. Well, season seven. But. Fuck that. Fuck all that. And speaking speaking of things that they never mention, I think now it's time to talk about one of my favorite little boys who just unceremoniously got forgotten about. Oh, Ragman? Nope. (laughs) Yeah, he he finally got a name drop after like three years. Well, it's been three years. It it was like they set up this whole new team arrow, old team arrow, and then they brought in Ragman, and they realized, oh crap, he's way too powerful. That's, yeah, that's show. crazy OP. And and Legends didn't exist at the time because you know if Legends had existed, he would have told. Well, I I still think he should have been on Legends. Fuck the Hawk people. Legends existed, but. It wasn't the legends yeah, that we know it, and love because I believe it, yeah. they were at like season two. Yeah, it was. It was at still, the time. Yeah, it was still trying to find its footing. Uh, it wasn't the like wacky fun mess that we know and love today. But I still think he would have been. And a also, great to be fair, legends doesn't really have its characters with a lot of power use their power that often. <laughs> <laughs> hey. 
funny. We both had the same exact cough at the same exact time. <laughs> yeah, it's contagious. It's called bullshit. Uh, it's, a, it's a very strong allergy. But anyway, um, so they brought him in. They didn't really do anything with him. but And, like, the only reason he was there was to kind of be the other magic person because the villain was Damien Dark, who sucked in that season. I'm gonna, yes, I, even though Neil McDonough is listen, an awesome listen, actor. Listen, listen, Neil McDonough got to redeem himself in one of the craziest, awesomest sequences in all of the Arrowverse. I can, I, mm-hmm. I can never, I can never like not picture that scene every time I hear that song. Um, but yeah, no. Which song are you talking Return about? Which song I know. Yep. <laughs> that was so good. Return of the Mac. Mac. <laughs> Return of the Mac. But yeah. Death here. I, Death there. I just, uh, just want to address this because like, we're, we're talking about the season overall. Uh, fucking Damien Dark is the worst villain, worst main villain in all of Arrow. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, Arrow has a lot of shitty one-offs. But um, all right, who do you think is the worst main villain? I, I would like to hear. Uh, I'd say it's competition between him and and White Rajah. Okay, okay. So I I will not defend it per se because I have a problem with White Ra. I have a problem with White Race. But but what did Damien Dark give us? Like connected to the Arrowverse outside of Legends. Uh, as opposed to Raish and his whole season and storyline giving us the League of Assassins, the Lazarus Pit, Nissa, Talia, all that cool shit. All that true. Shit. But if you go just if you go just like individual villains. Yeah, but I, I'm talking about just, when I say like first villain, I'm talking like as a whole package, as in like the villain, the impact. Oh yeah, then. Then I'd say Roz definitely skirts above. Oh yeah, no, he, no, he, I'm, uh, he's definitely up there. I'm not saying he's not, but Damian Dark is bottom of the barrel in terms of Arrow. Like, there, like it, Arrow has the same problem Flash had, but at least Arrow ended up getting good villains by the end with fucking Diaz. Diaz was great. Mm-hmm. And I I do gotta admit though, um he was good once I got over the fact that they just um wait, was Ricardo Diaz was He was Richard Dragon, yes. Yeah, so that kinda irked no, me. No, I get it. But honestly, at this point, if I continue to get mad at them not following like exactly how villains are in Arrow, I would have just stopped watching Arrow. Well, well, because also the thing that kind of irked me was right as Arrow was going along, I had an idea for for perfect casting, fan casting for like comic accurate. Richard Dragon. Oh. <laughs> and so I was a little mad that that never came to be. Oh. Uh, Jason David Frank, by the way. Oh, perfect, yeah. But, but anyway, so, yeah, I do gotta agree. You go by just their stuff. Because, honestly, I, thinking about it, I can't even remember what it it's taking me a hard time to remember what. Now there are a, there is a long list of shitty recurring villains, but I think the worst recurring villain of all time, and this shows you just how bad it was. There were three different Count Vertigos, and they all were horrible. Yeah, but they were played. They were, like, all played by... I'm not denying the actors were great. I'm just saying that the, the choice for the character, like, by the people in charge of the show, was a horrible choice. 
It should not have been made. Because they, they brought in, um, they brought in, what's his face? Uh, I forgot who it is now, who played the young, sexy Count Vertigo. Yeah, like, I, I, I get it, guys. At this point, like, metas weren't as firm of a thing yet. Or I don't think they were even a thing when the first Count Vertigo came around. Um, so you couldn't do the powers, right? But... But after the particle accelerator thing happened, and then Flashpoint happened, you could have just easily been like, "Oh yeah, this new Count Vertigo, he's a man now." And and you know, they brought in Peter Stormare to play the second version. Yeah, Peter fucking Stormare. Right. This dude is amazing. And- if and you... he's got the right, he can do the right accent for a real Count Vertigo. Like, come on. That was perfect, and you wasted it. Yeah. The dude has gone up against John Wick. He's awesome. Yep. And he would have been perfect for it, but no, they had to waste him. Like, they waste everything. Yep. Well, not, not everything, everything, but but so let's go back up to the pasta train since we've proven that we are no longer we are not CW apologists. Well, um, well, um, just last little thing. Okay. I know you hate her, but since we're talking oh, about natives, we have to hell. bring her up. No, I know exactly where he's going, you guys. I don't want to do it. We got to talk about her. It's our last time talking Fine. about her, but we got to. I just, I just want to say, just want to say, I'm glad that crisis happened, and they can fix that, because it looks like maybe with how they casted her, you know, quote unquote adopted daughter, maybe that means they're gonna recast her as something closer to the like the current fifty, not fifty two, but the current rebirth version of the character. And um, by the way, just real quick, yeah. And Jay, I hate to tell you this, but but Beth Schwartz, who is amazing, by the way, and took the reins with Arrow and ran with it. Like I've never seen a showrunner take up an existing show, at least in the states. Um, but she's. She was asked if there's anyone that she wanted to bring back for the finale that she didn't get a chance to. And she said there was one person. It was Huntress. Ah. Mm-hmm. Dang it, Beth. You know what? That doesn't change her. You, you did great. You did great. Especially in the wake of, you know, the stuff that happened that led to you getting the job. But we're not talking about that one. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about that one. But... But, but anyway, yeah, back to the show. Um, if we talk about cur- characters, Curtis came back, another troublesome character. So, on this so, I lo- so I have a love-hate relationship with Curtis. Curtis is hilarious. Mm-hmm. I love the actor. I think he is the right amount of levity for Arrow. Um, uh, he would have been great if they didn't have Felicity. And that's not to say I didn't want Felicity there, but it just felt weird having him and Felicity in the same room, making the same jokes, uh, you know, saying the same things. Like I And I get they're friends, and they, they operate on similar wavelengths. I mean, hell, me and Brian do that shit all the time. Um, but, like, come on, y'all. Like, you just made him black, gay black Felicity... Uh, male Felicity instead of making him his own character. And the stuff where he had his own actual storylines like with his husband and stuff yeah, y'all, y'all just kind of swept that under the rug. To the fact that, to the fact where uh, he was um, the husband was never brought up again but Curtis does yeah, have a fiance yeah, the cop in guy. the finale. He finally got with the cop guy. Mm. It wasn't, it the, wasn't co- the cop oh, guy. Wasn't the I'm cop sorry. Guy? Oh, I thought it was the cop guy. 
it was it was it was his new boy that he met in DC. Well, well still good for him. Um, so moving on to like where they are now is for Team Arrow. Um, Renee, man, Renee had the yo. Th- this is awesome. So Renee is a character when he first showed up. I thought he was the most annoying person on the face of the earth because he would not be mm-hmm. shown up. And it was hoss this, hoss that. Bro, relax. Calm. He's like, what is going on here? What is Calm. going on there? I Calm don't get down, it. Calm down, bro. Like, you're just, you're just Casey Jones. Why are you even here? You're Casey Jones with guns. And then, you know, we get to learn more about his character. And I'm like, okay, so you're dead shot because they can't afford dead shot and they killed him off. Okay. And then we learn more about his character. It's like, okay, I actually like you now. And then he turns out to like betray all of them. It's like, well, I don't like you anymore. <laughs> and then this is the whole thing. But you know, Renee has been through probably the biggest growth arc um, out of all the proteges, bes- aside and, from Roy. And he is one character. Who had a complete costume change? Everybody, including the the character's creator, publicly said, "Thanks, I yeah. hate it," and they went back to his original yeah. costume. Because <laughs> when he had like that silver that mask horrible. and horrible, <laughs> yes. absolutely. Like I said, even the even the guy who created well, well, was like. I was like, thanks. Wild I hate dog. It. Um, but yeah, no, uh, he had like just the greatest come up story, man. He was just like a dude from the, the bad part of Star City, the Glades. And he wanted to be a vigilante because he was inspired by, you know, Roy, Ollie, and all of them. And then eventually, he not only like he moved past being a vigilante and found another life and found another way to help people. By like influencing change, like through the proper channels, and he learned that he had a pretty good gift for politics, um, and he became fucking mayor. Mm-hmm. And in the good timeline, not the timeline where he's like corrupt and under the influence of Skynet. Look, if you have, and in the good timeline, he's mayor for three yeah. terms. Um, if you don't, if you don't understand the whole Skynet thing, you clearly didn't watch season seven. Season seven's great, guys. Like, watch it. It's honestly one of the better ones. Um, but yeah. So that. But so. I but feel yeah. Like um. Everybody on Team Arrow. But... Well, um. Also, I just want to say about Renee is. They also proved to us that not all kid actors oh, yeah. in the Arrowverse have to, have to, have to be bad. You know, William sucked. Ruby sucked. Um, who else? Who are, what other kid actors were there? Um, yeah, William sucked. Ruby sucked. But Zoe, kid Zoe is awesome. That, that's the only reason I like adult Zoe is because she's the only kid I can tolerate because she actually talked like a kid. Yeah, but she was also yeah, badass. Like, cause, 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 like, my problem kid. with William is, especially in the beginning, they had no idea what age he was because, like, they were writing his no. dialogue like he was fucking seven years old, and this man, is, this this man is like twelve. It's like it's like at times they'd write him like he was seven, but then other times they'd also try to add. Like hormones yeah, to it, it and it's weird. just like it's real weird. So he's a teenager, uh, but but then he's yeah, also right? seven. It was real weird. So that's why I didn't like. That's why I didn't like and, William until we got real William. <laughs> and also, um, kid William, some of his best scenes were acting off of yep. kid Zoe. Uh, so um, now. That we've talked about all of original Team Arrow, um, ex- except for, let's quickly acknowledge one of the huge thanks crisis things that we also talked about like briefly, but didn't have time because we we're running out of time. Sarah Diggle's back, you guys. Sarah Diggle's back. Yep. Yeah, which, which, by the way, 
that was one of the like when I was thinking about like Oliver bringing back people and everything that almost made me cry because I was thinking yeah, about it because, and when it's yeah. like Oliver made the choice to yeah, bring these people because, back and then because it's like Lila, oh my god yeah, he because made the Lila, Lila came to this conclusion that's why she's freaking out about saving William because she goes you don't understand what he did for us Johnny Oliver gave us our daughter back he chose to bring her I was just like oh my god he gave us one last gift before he left I was like oh no oh, my heart Shoot. Doing a favor for his bro. <laughs> and and uh, then that favor backfires. That favor is definitely going to backfire. Because she, and she, maybe. she's definitely going to be... She's definitely going to be Deathstroke. I, she, she's got to be. She's got to be. I'm, I'm sticking with our theory that, like, Johnny is going to, like... That Johnny is gonna like snap, like is going to like have still his memories of like the the new timeline, and so that'll influence him to not entirely go with the Deathstroke thing, and so he'll turn try to turn against you know Sarah, and then get stabbed and die in Mia's arms as all love in as all big time like first love interests do if you're a fucking queen. So are you? So are you telling me? That out of the Diggle family, the only one that survives in modern time who isn't evil or dead is the adopted one. Yeah. Yeah. Connor. Which, by the way, they did hint that there was some dark stuff about Connor. Oh, yeah. The, yeah the, that, was pretty, that was made pretty clear when he was fresh out of jail. Um, so. And Mia was throwing mad yeah. shade at him. Uh, but. Yeah, but, yeah. But yeah, um we did we were going by characters and we didn't talk about OT. Oh yeah. Like Oh yeah, like uh, I wanted to save that towards the end cuz like I wanted to like talk about Felicity and like her whole interaction with Mia while, like while we talk about Mia. Um All right, cool. So uh but oh, what about that's, that's why I transitioned into like the Sarah Diggle thing and like you know, we talked about the Green Lantern thing and whatnot. Um Oh, um, my but bad. yeah. So uh, the, real quick, uh, we're gonna address like the Flash episode because like that's connected to Oliver as well, um, and like that plot line. I loved it. I loved it. Um, I wasn't as invested in this as I was in the Iris plot line. Wow, that's that's a that's a line you'd never thought you'd hear me say. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I loved it though because it ties everything back. The, the mask all, um, Barry made for Ollie when he first met him and stuff like that. Um, like, him going back to Lee and Yu. And this being Oliver telling Barry what he always tries to tell Barry. But Barry never listens. Because, God damn it, Barry. Why don't you ever listen? Slow down. Enjoy it. Relax. Which, they, they genuinely got me. Because I was, like, wondering. Is this going to be, like an actual thing, or is it not? Or is the fact that it's not a red herring, that it actually is? Or See, I, I don't what know. are they doing? I'm, I'm still kind of mixed up on that, because I think it might also be something that, like, it might end up, you know, secretly tying back to Black Hole somehow. Um, so we'll have to see. Uh, this, isn't, this isn't a Flash podcast. So we're gonna... it, it could, and that would be interesting, uh, but but at least yeah. for this episode, it turned yeah. out to just be yeah, a just, moment for for Oliver's brothers to bond and together. And that's something that I loved about Crisis um, and like the, the follow up episodes is that we got interactions between the people in Oliver's life that never actually like get to interact by themselves without Oliver there. Um, you know, obviously Diggle had some funny stuff with like uh, taking that like fuck ton of motion sickness medicine before getting you know zooped with by Barry. He goes he goes, look man mm-hmm. he goes, I know you hate it, but it's a ten hour flight otherwise. So And then he just starts taking the medicine. <laughs> he, and Barry's like he, he, he it's No he's not treating it help. he's treating it like it's fucking like the mini M M&M and M thingies. And Barry's like, dude, that's way too much. That's way too much. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, like that was great. I love that episode, and I also love that like Dig is moving forward with his life. He's not just because um, like the story with Diggle was it made so much sense. I love that Diggle was the focal point of this finale because he did not know where to go from here. Because the mission never ended for Oliver. It never ended. That was kind of his thing. That's what he had to learn for himself. And also, I guess because due to budget and not being able to have everyone, Oliver died twice in crisis, and Dig wasn't there for yeah, either and, version. And yeah, that really hurt him. So. Like, they really explore that pretty deeply. And man, his fucking speech... Tears. Mm-hmm. Tears. Straight up tears. Almost tears. Uh, I, I wasn't like balling, but I definitely like had like the, the, the manly single single roll tear happen. Um which how dare they? They have Paul Blackthorn do an awesome eulogy speech to Oliver and then they follow it up with yeah, David right? Ramsey doing one. I'm just like, can you get my heart to break? Like, calm down, guys. Uh, but um, yeah, that was that was phenomenal. Also, I just I love that like they had Diggle on the salmon ladder because uh, if you follow Stephen on Twitter or Facebook or wherever, if you've been a fan of Arrow for you know this whole amount of time, you know, and you're familiar with the behind the scenes stuff, you know that like the like kind of hazing ritual for the arrow cast is the, the new members of the cast have to do a salmon have to do the salmon ladder at least once they do it like once when they like when they first get on here and if they if they uh, get to a point where their character leaves or is written off they do it once before they leave and they even incorporated that into the episode that was great And I gotta tell you, one of the more surprising, but still, I will be honest with you guys, kind of hit some places, is Katie Lutz doing it. Because I didn't know that she could do that. That was awesome. Oh, Oh, man. Um, But yeah, uh, so... uh, What what, what else is there to talk about, Brian? Do, Do we have anything else? Oh yeah, me. Um, he wasn't oh, in yeah. the finale, but but I feel like we should at least just we should at least just do a one off like talking about Ben Lewis's William, version William, of William um, is amazing. William, uh, I I loved his character interacting with Mia. I know everybody, everybody and their mom. I feel like Brian and I are the only people that enjoy children of hero characters on Arrowverse shows because everybody else I talk to is like, yeah, I don't like Nora. Yeah, I don't like Mia. Uh, but, but, I literally just talked to one of my friends, like, a couple hours ago before recording this, and he was like, you know what? I love this finale. And it did something that I never thought would happen. I cared about Mia. And I like Mia. I saw a lot of I actually saw a lot of people who were like, yeah, I never really cared for Mia, but the finale started also, to get me. Also, I, I, I just loved the uh, the arc from season seven of, all, you know, Oliver finally getting to spend time with his kids and, like, you know, William finally getting to tell his dad all this stuff. And he goes, oh, yeah, dad, so I'm gay. And he goes, yeah, bud, I know. We were just gonna. We were just waiting until uh, you, me, and your mom were just waiting until you were ready to tell us. We yeah. weren't gonna rush it. That was awesome. <laughs> and and he was like, "We were waiting for you to tell us, but apparently you never that did." That was awesome. That he had, there were so many good moments. Like you know, I got um. You know, I you know I don't want this the, the, the episode to go past the time limit, but I I gotta like really really give it up for Stephen Amell. This man. This, Indeed. this man, the transformation, and I'm not just talking about his, like, you know, perfectly sculpted abs and chest and triceps and everything, basically. Uh, but where was I? Um, anyways, uh, seriously, like the transformation that he went through 
season one, and this is no knock to him. Like, this is one of his first major roles as a lead. Like, season one, he was super fucking stiff. Super fucking stiff. Um, and that, and I got, we never really got, because when we talked about the history of mm-hmm. the show and all, we never really got to go into it. But honestly, for those of you who don't know, I love Green, Lan- uh, Green Arrow. Like, the character of Green Arrow, and not just because he's an archer. I love his, like, happy-go-lucky, But, that, but that's, like, that's, like, at least 20% of why. Yeah. But love his, like, quippy nature and all of that. And the fact that he's rich, but he still fights for the poor. Like, kind of Robin Hood, Batman-esque. And the, I could go mm. on to why I like the character of Green Arrow. But then... I like the character of Green Arrow from the comics and from the anime stuff. And then you go and you watch the first season of Arrow. And it's like, holy crap, this dude is like hybrid Punisher and yeah, Batman. He, and dude, he's so, he was so stiff in the first season. But man, as time went along, he became one of, and if not the strongest actor in the main cast. I mean... The amount of mm-hmm. times his speeches, and especially in the later seasons, have mm-hmm. given me chills and just gotten me hyped. Like, dude. And and the thing is, is you see a melon. Real and... life, and he is basically just Green Arrow, like the actual Green Arrow. Like, how you expect Green Arrow to be from the comics? And, you know, I guess because, you know, the, like... He got to know the character a lot more over time, and he got to really kind of get more say as he got more pull within the show to like the direction he could go with it. Like he fought for the goatee and the beard to be a thing, um, and then eventually, and he also fought for the scene with the boxing glove arrow, um, and then like, I bet, and he fought. It, it took him until like the last couple seasons, but he fought for Oliver to tell jokes mm-hmm. and to be jokey. And then we got to see some of that personality towards the end, and it was great. And that's what we loved. And it's just he is so phenomenal, dude. Like I, I can't, you know, I can't, you know, do this show without giving just the biggest of props to Stephen Amell. Like you are Green Arrow, good sir. Like. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean that as a, like, you, you will never escape the role, but to me, like, no matter what role you'll be, uh, you know, you, you know, find yourself in, and I hope you do, like, a, more amazing work, uh, but man, you will always be Oliver Queen to me, and that just means a lot. In, indeed, and even though I am not a fan of pro wrestling, I am excited for his yeah, new show. Right? Same, um, like it, it, just, it just sounds really interesting because because you he because it's something he's really passionate about. So like you know it's gonna be fun from that aspect, you know. Because like when he puts his all this, because when he put mm-hmm. his, when he puts his all in this stuff, you can't you like so it's great. Um, in indeed, and um, kudos to him as an actor. Yeah, just, so much growth, dude. All right, now let's. Uh, so we quickly addressed William. Uh, let's now let's talk about Mia. Let's talk about Mia. Oh my God, yo! Uh, I, and I'm glad this is the last section. Um, dude, dude. When I tell you, from the jump, from the jump, the character I wanted in this show the most was Mia Dearden. You can. There are several videos of just me and Cat being like, "When's Mia showing up?" And then we had a whole. We did a whole video together, just freaking out over the fact that Mia's uh, Thea's middle name is Dearden, and you know that's Moira's maiden name. So, anyway, uh, bottom line: Mia Dearden, the character that uh, is, uh, you know, Mia Smoke is loosely oh. based off of, is. My home and oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say sorry. I just realized something. What? Mia is short for Moira. Yep. 
So technically in the show, we did oh, yeah. get Mia Dearden. Oh, yeah. Cause that was the mom's yeah, maiden name. You're so right. oh wow, I didn't even realize it. Nice catch. Yeah, I, I can tell you just caught it because of like you know I I like I get I heard I literally heard the gear starting. Um, but yeah. Um, so like she's she's a char- she's my absolute favorite character from the Green Arrow comics. Like the Jed Winnick run of Green Arrow is how I got into Green Arrow. And her story is super powerful. Um, super freaking powerful. And to the fact where it was one of the few times where I've actually seen Jay excited when they revealed that a character had a drug. Yeah, problem. because I thought, look, look, and this is going to sound really weird out of context. It's going to sound really weird out of context. So let me explain. Mia Dearden, I'm going to make this as fast as I possibly can. Mia Dearden, um, her, Judd Winnick, Ha, um, was friends with this guy. Um, I forget the I, I forget the person's name, but he was on the real world, and he was the guy on the real world that um, like was diagnosed with HIV, and that was his best friend. He died, and so when he got the job as the writer for Green Arrow, as homage as an homage to his friend, the new character he created ended up have, uh, being diagnosed with HIV because of a dirty needle. So, yeah, uh, w- I was excited when Thea had a drug problem because I was like, oh, are they going there? They didn't go there. But it's cool because we got Mia Smoke and she's amazing. And, uh, you know, I am definitely biased towards Catherine McNamara because I'm a big Shadowhunters fan. Uh, more of the books than the TV show, but the TV show was pretty decent um, for the most part. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, but uh, she was the best part of that, hands down. Her and the uh, Emra Tubia, who played Izzy. Um, and so when I heard she was cast as Mia Smoke, I was over the moon about it. Um, and she has not let me down. Uh, she continues to amaze me, and I cannot wait to see more of her in Green Arrow and the Canaries. And her arc of fully getting to say goodbye to her father, you know, after getting her memories back and going to the funeral and just experiencing, you know, moments with the kid version of her older brother um, and, like, you know, talking to her mom who, you know, dipped and we're going to talk about where that ending late in a second. Um, getting to talk to her mom and kind of explaining, telling her mom, no, mom, you did a good job. Thank you. You did great. A fantastic moments. And then the smaller moments when, like, people like Barry gave her a hug and was just like, I'm sorry. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Barry, it's not your fault, man. I blame you for a lot of stuff, but this isn't on you. And when he said that he tried, like, yeah, when he was when saying he, that he tried. He, yo, when he started crying in front of, when he started crying to Felicity, I was just like, no, buddy, stop. It's okay. Don't do it. It's not your fault, man. It's not your fault. And then she, and then, you know, Felicity is a real G, like one of her best moments. Shout out to Emily for this one. She's like, no, Barry, you couldn't have stopped him even if you wanted to. Powers or not. Because that's just who Oliver Queen is. And I'm just like, yo, please stop. Please stop. My heart can't take this. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, but wow. Okay. So now we're going to transition into the final part before we get into plugs. That ending, man. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. I mean, they set it up at the end of season seven, uh, and we finally got that payoff. But my God, dude. Like, it made me realize just how much, like, of the show is dependent on all this D for better or for worse, but mostly for better, if I'm being completely honest. Like, sure, I have some parts where I really, like, hated on it. I actively hated on it. But I'm not going to deny, like, that ship is the heart and soul of this show. Like, if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't get Jokey's fun Oliver. 
Um, mm-hmm. We wouldn't get the Green Arrow. We wouldn't have the Arrow Cave or the actual nicknames like Team Arrow and stuff like that. Felicity's great. She's amazing. Now, like, was she perfectly handled all throughout? Oh, hell no. Hell no. I could do no. an entire episode of this podcast just talking about the one thing that I could change about Arrow to make it just that much better. And even before that certain piece of tech that we will not nope. name, she was a little troublesome. Still but... loved her. Like, she was the archetype of the character that became kind of the trope and staple of Arrowverse team. But the reason trope, tropes form for a reason, because it works. She works. It was great. And it was still great. And I love that it ended where it began at the office. And we got to see a different perspective of their meet cute, and the the red pen was there. It was it was all there. It was great. Oh, never been so emotional for a red, red pen. Oh my god, dude! It just it hit me so hard. I was like, wow, this happened eight years ago. I was in college. Wow. Like. Damn. Isn't it funny? Like, eight years ago, I I was starting college. Eight years later, you're in college. Technically. Yeah, for a different reason. But, but yeah, it is kind of weird. Yeah. So, um, what are your thoughts on the ending? I, I, like, I, like, almost blubbered on audio. Yeah, I uh, Definitely with, like, the red pen and all that. Although, I do find it kind of weird, though, that everyone was like, where did Ollie go? Where did Ollie go? Yeah. And then when we finally find out where he went, basically, that means that in the finale, Felicity died. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, but I, I, that's basically what, that's what they implied, though. She was like, I'm ready. And, like, the, how she was talking and the finality of it and how she was like, I'm never going to see you guys again. Like, she's choosing to die. <laughs> or, you know, I guess live in purgatory? Question mark. Which is technically dying? Whatever. Um, but either way, this also confirms that, you know, once again, Captain Lance was right. Ollie's not gone. And by Captain Man- Captain Lance, I mean Sarah. Um, yeah. Ollie's not gone. Don't fret, y'all. He can still be around. Steven will never leave the Arrowverse. He loves it too much to stay away forever. Um, um, because think of two things. Uh they said that Felicity can never leave the purgatory. Yep. They didn't say anything about the Spectre. Speck. Yep. And then also, we got the multiverse, which has already established a version of Oliver that has been in multiple episodes now. Yep. The like. No man's land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the one with the the one with the uh, missing an arm and shit. Yeah. And then also on top of all that, we have time travel. Yep. Uh, with the legend. So, um, in conclusion, man, uh, it's been a ride. It's been a real ride, and it it definitely has. Um. I mean, we've had some really high highs. And some really, and really, really low lows. Like, we can't... To the fact where we were like, okay, we're purposely boycotting. Like, we'll still watch it, but we're boycotting. Reviewing it. I'm not giving you the extra attention by, like, promoting your show for free. Um, you know, I'm... It's very similar to a certain show that's airing right now. Um, uh, but, you know, we'll see how that one turns around. I don't think so. But Yeah, and I will admit, if we're talking about negatives, mm-hmm. 
uh, we mentioned one of them before, but there were two specific people, maybe three, that I would have liked to have seen in the finale who weren't. Okay. There. Of course, Manu. Yeah, of course. And then maybe even like Selena Jade, uh, Shadow. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, you mean Shadow's twin sister? Well, no, that's the name of the actress. No, I mean Shadow's twin sister. Shadow or Shadow's no, twin no, sister. But, yeah, um, no, but I mean, like, oh, yeah, because Shadow could have been brought back via crisis. I was talking about, but I was like, Shadow's twin sister is the one that's alive. <laughs> but, but, yeah. Um, oh, we didn't, we didn't even we... talk about it. Real quick, Amiko. She back. She's back, and she's part of the family. Yeah, that's cool. Love that. Well, well, the the show goes off with her rekindling yeah. yeah. so with them. They're, like they're reconnecting, and it's awesome. Love that. I was so pissed when they killed her off. I, thank you. I'm glad you, y'all fixed that. Um, yeah. Okay. They fixed a lot of things with the finale. That's why I was a little mad that we didn't get to see them, or the or the dude who was Shadow's dad. Oh yeah, Laufey. Laufey. Even though we did get an episode with him, so I will give you yeah. credit on that. Fun fact, uh, but... fun fact. I actually, I, I named a, pa- I named a Pathfinder character after him, but I am not a ranger or rogue. Um, I'm... but I would have, I would have liked to have seen at least something with Manu and Selena Jade in the final season, but we never yeah. did. Oh well. Say la vie, I guess. It, like we said, it wasn't perfect, it but was, it was, it was, honestly, it was all we needed. It was all we needed it to be. And let and let's be honest here. Better than Game of Thrones. Seriously though, it's one of the best finales I've seen in years. Better than Game of Thrones. Better than Pretty Little Liars. Uh, I mean, I know some of y'all be like Pretty Little Liars. That's not a high bar. Pretty Little Liars should be great, you guys. But anyways, yeah, no, it's one of the best finales I've seen in years, especially in this like string of. Shows shitting, long running shows shitting the bed with their, um, like final episode. Yeah, and you know, I think it's weird. I think it's weird to say, but it's true. One of the main factors I think that went into the show being so good with the final episode is the final episode was post the main character dying. Yeah. Yeah, that, isn't that weird that like one of the best episodes has the main character dead, and that's not and it's not even enough to be being the main character is bad. We spent a whole like section just gushing about how amazing Stephen Amell and Oliver we, Queen is. Oh yeah! By the way, we totally didn't even mention the flashback in the in the finale. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot about that. But um, I mean, we can... which which we got to see one last time. Um, Amel fighting with James Banford's amazing choreography. Yeah, I I hope they hired. I mean, I hope that James Banford like comes back uh, for Green Arrow and the Canaries. I mean, he did the backdoor pilot, so you know. Yeah, could, and a lot of people have said that it's probably one of the best fights of all time. That last yep, fight. Yep, yep, yep. And just that shot of all the heroes just like suiting up and then go. Like going off the rooftops, it was fantastic. Uh, yes, it uh, was, and it was a nice way to send off. And I uh, and also I did, um, like last thing I loved they had the cheers moment where they shut that they shut off the lights of the arrow cave as they like walked out. Yeah, though I heard some people gripe about that because it, they because... were like, "Why was it Dinah?" Oh come on, guys. I mean, I get it, but come on, no, guys. No, Dig was right there, and they were like, "Why didn't he?" Yeah, I know, I know, but I, but still, come on, guys, leave her alone. She's alright. She's not the best. She's alright. And I now wonder, thinking about it, I now wonder, uh, what does the Arrow Cave look like now in this new future? Because I know in the past future, where vigilantes were outlawed. Yeah, it's all overgrown it was... and stuff, yeah. Well, you know, tune in. So hopefully we can tune in to Green Arrow and the Black Canaries for that answer. Or, and the Canaries. And if they do do that show, 
you can bet that we will eventually talk about it. Oh, hell yeah. That's, that's we just got to. Um, but yeah, you guys, uh, thank you for sticking around and thank you, Arrow, for giving us eight years of, well, I can't say eight years of always great content, but eight years of content that we will always remember and love. And jump starting a universe and a trend and being the start of TV as it is yeah, today. Just like, I, again, the foundation of my career. I owe a lot to you, Arrow. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so now we're getting into plugs. And we seem to be doing good on time. So yeah, Brian, what are you doing this week that the people can look forward to on your YouTube channel that is linked in the description? Well, for Sunday, yeah, I... On Sundays, I cover, well, just Batwoman and Supergirl are on a break. So. Just Doctor Who. Just Doctor Who. Which, oh boy, as we were filming this, the title of Episode 9 came out. And, bah, Interesting. Uh, well, um... You can tell me off, Mike. You can tell me off, Mike. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I meant the episode... But anyway, uh, then Monday is, uh, I don't know if they went on break or not. I don't think so. What, Black Lightning? Yep, Black Lightning. Uh, then Tuesday is Legends. Yep. Then Wednesday is Nancy Drew and only Nancy Drew. Yep. Fuck off. <sighs> then Thursdays is my... Only double day this Favorite week. Favorite night of the week. Katie Keen and Legacy. Favorite night of the week. No joke. It it both those shows are rocking it, and Katie Keen's only had one. Yep. <laughs> and the way Legacy's ended. Oh, yeah, right, right. Uh, but yeah, Friday, Owl House. Friday. Friday is typically Owl House and Harley Quinn. Oh shit! That, uh, I I come. Uh, sorry, that that's just <clears throat> me. Like completely, like just now remembering that that is that's what I was forgetting today that I was supposed to do today. <laughs> I even reminded you about it yesterday. I know you did. You I know like, you did, but I was... Oh, I, shit, that's what I forgot. I know you did, but I was doing a lot of stuff yesterday, and then I was doing a lot of stuff today to prep for this podcast. But anyway, but yeah. we got two more episodes of Harley Quinn, and without spoiling, it's going to be crazy. I just didn't get a chance to record yesterday, because I had a week, and when I came home from work and all that, my body was like, no, you're going to... You're going to crash, and you're going to crash hard. I think in total, between yesterday and today, I've slept like 20 hours. Damn. Damn. So, I I crashed hard. I slept through Owl House, and so I was just like, I'm sorry, I can't record. But normally, that's what I cover on Fridays, and then Saturday, we are back to doing... Yep, we are doing The Good Place. Uh, it's uh, two fucking weeks late, but uh, you know, we got to do it because it's the finale, and I want to talk about it. I have a lot of feelings. Uh, it's going to be great. Uh, I love that show so much. Cannot wait to do it. And then next week, just to give you guys a little teaser, because we got, we, we got plans. We're, we're prepared. We're actually professional. Uh, next week, we're doing High Fidelity. Or, or the week after Good Place, we're doing High Fidelity. Mm-hmm. Finally, a show that won't make a sense. Right? <laughs> and that's how we grab it. So, yay. Um, unfortunately, uh, I know a couple people have asked. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we're going to have to skip out on Lock and Key because we just don't have room in the schedule. Um, and I feel like if we covered it, like, really, like, later than we would have, like, it just wouldn't, like, do as well. Uh, but, you know, I'm watching it right now. Uh, and enjoying it, um, and hopefully I'll get to do um, a review on it on Monday, which I guess will transition into my plugs. Uh, so Sunday, I'm doing Doctor Who, and Dare Me is back, so 
man, that show's crazy. Um, I cannot wait to see what happens next with Jeremy, especially with how the, the last episode uh, ended off two weeks ago. Um, so that's great. Uh, Monday, I believe the good doctor is back. Uh, if not, then um, I guess the only thing I'll have is the hopefully lock and key review, uh, uh, which I'm looking forward to. I really like it so far. Super trippy. Don't watch it at night. I couldn't sleep. I've literally like slept a total of um, maybe six hours because I kept closing my eyes and seeing Lovecraft creatures and yeah, no. Don't watch it at night. Um, but yeah, I, I'm gonna be reviewing Lock and Key soon. Uh, hopefully Monday. Uh, Tuesday is Flash and Legends. Wednesday is Nancy Drew. Cause sorry, other show. Uh, you had your chance. I will re- murder I- capital of the world. I will review the finale, the season finale, just out of obligation and just to say, all right, after this. I'm done in terms of reviewing. Uh, but yeah, that is the, the only episode I promise I'm going to do um, of that show. Um, then Thursday, as Brian said, ne- um, Legacies and whatchamacallit, what was the other one? Uh, Katie, Katie Keene. Katie Keene's amazing. Legacies, oh my god. Chris Wood, why weren't you this good on Supergirl? Um, but I get it. You know the character better. Um, Anyways, uh, Legacies, Kid Heen, amazing. Love it. Also, A Million Little Things. Love that show. Full of feels. Oh, also on Tuesday, This Is Us as well. I forgot about that. I, I review a lot of shows. Sometimes it slips my mind. Um, Friday, Harley Quinn, Owl House. And hopefully I'll remember Harley Quinn this time. I'm sorry. Uh, I know th- that's a pretty popular one on my Blair channel. Uh, I will review it, and I'll talk about last week's episode as well. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I'll be doing an individual review on High Fidelity also. So, uh, thank you for, uh, in listening to this episode of the Channel Chasers podcast. Uh, thank you to anybody who's, you know, come from the YouTube channel and are, are listening to us on the go because you want to listen to us on the go. Uh, thank you to anybody from the Batwoman podcast the audience who might've like migrated over here because I plugged it at the end of the episode. Um, and thank you to just anyone who's listening in general. You guys are great. Uh, We hope you guys enjoyed this, and hopefully we did not fail this podcast. But until next time, we'll catch you guys later. Peace. Peace.